Today we're going to find out what exactly happens to champagne bottles when they go down with the ship. Let's go. I thought I'd like to share this bottle of champagne with all you guys and gals out there watching. I know it's been requested by a few of you folks and this is your channel, so let's see what happens. Okay, for today's test, I procured this Bollinger Cuvée Spéciale 007's go-to champagne. Since this bottle is from France, we have about six bar or 90 PSI of internal pressure due to the dissolved carbon dioxide content which gives the champagne its bubbly texture. For this test, we'll leave the cage installed in the cork. It's a good thing I ate my Wheaties this morning. I'm just going to take my party hat off for a bit because I need to hear what's going on inside. We're either going to bring the near with a bang or with a taste test. Let's find out.
Wow, this test really blew me away. I'm amazed at how hydrophobic and impermeable the cork is from the water intrusion, even with the high pressure, considering it's sourced naturally from bark grown on a cork tree. It's fascinating to think that humans discovered this trait over 5,000 years ago in Egypt, China, Babylon, and Persia, when they first started sealing containers with this material. This bottle of champagne imploded at 2,823 psi, which is nearly two kilometers deep in the ocean. I know you guys have mentioned uncorked champagne bottles discovered in the Titanic wreckage, which lies even deeper at 3.8 kilometers. It would be amazing if the seal actually held, but I reckon all the seals have already been compromised and the pressure inside equalized with the pressure outside when the ship sank on its way down back in 1912. It's interesting to think that Cork seal containers have been imploding on deep water maritime wrecks for thousands of years, and this is the first time it's been captured on camera with a hydrophone. I'm just going to slow this down right before the implosion and run this till the end of the shot because I just find this footage so mesmerizing with the lighting on it. I've learned my lesson from the beer bottle implosion test on episode 2, and I've placed a thick rubber spacer at the back of the chamber to absorb the shock from the implosion. Right after the cork failure, you can see the bottle shattering in the background. The champagne fluid was forced to the back of the bottle, and the pressure equalized right after. Since the opening of the bottle was slightly tilted up, a steady stream of remaining champagne and cork debris that didn't blow up from the back end floated from the front because of the slightly lower density of the champagne. The sparkle in the water is not from the bubbly, but rather the cork debris and tiny glass particles suspended in the water. Remember, this is still under high pressure and sinking. All the carbon dioxide gas remains compressed until the pressure drops back down the atmosphere. But by the time it reaches the surface, the concentration is so diluted with water, we don't see a lot of bubbles forming on camera. Let's take a close look at the imploded bubble. We can see that the cork is relatively intact surprisingly enough, after firing into the bottle. When we take a closer look at the opening, we can see that the localized uh, pressure differential around this area was so great that it slammed the cap right up against the lip. As the cork traveled through the bottle, a wave of high pressure accompanied it, which is what ultimately shattered the bottle, as you can see here. We can see that these champagne bottles are relatively thick when compared to wine bottles, and this is in order to hold the 90 psi of internal pressure to keep the gas dissolved in the champagne. Let's quickly take a measurement of the thickness at the base of the body. about seven millimeters. Here is a 360 shot of the debris field, which you guys can examine for yourself. I don't know about you guys, but I want to do the test again, but from a different angle. So instead of making a larger chamber, 
have a better, slightly cheaper idea. I got this 375 milliliter bottle of Moet de Chanel. I didn't realize this until after I bought it, but this was the brand of champagne that was served on board the Titanic at the time. Let's see what happens. I don't know about you guys, but I shed a tear during editing. It looks like the bottle imploded at 2,522 psi, or 1,739 meters, which is 207 meters before the implosion of the larger bottle. I would say that's close enough, since they're both cork failures, and the size of the cork and the opening of the bottle are pretty much the same. Let's see the implosion again in slow motion. You can see after the seal failure, a pressure wave shot through the bottle, blowing out the bottom of the glass. At the same time, the cork shrinks instantaneously, since it's now compressed from all sides. When we zoom into the closed cell structure of the cork, we can see why this material is so impermeable, elastic, and buoyant, with all the little air pockets inside. After the gas trapped in the cork cell is re-expanded from the depressurization, as we learned about from Boyle's Law on episode 3, the cork grew bigger and wedged itself into the neck of the bottle. You guys can take a closer look here. On this smaller champagne bottle, the thickness of the glass wall at the bottom varies, but averages around 6.2 millimeters thick. I 
I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I did. If you guys are wondering, I'm running an SLR camera that maxes out at 240 frames per second, which apparently is not up to snuff for this kind of work. I didn't anticipate the incredible speeds of these implosions until I started filming just over a month ago. Unfortunately, everything went into building the pressure chamber this year and had nothing left for a fancy high-speed camera. This is where you guys come in to help, simply by clicking the like and subscribe button, sharing this out on social media, and leaving comments below like, I've subscribed, so that YouTube can bring videos like this up to the surface. This channel is brand new, and you guys just happen to stumble upon it by accident. The ad revenue proceeds, as little as it may be, will go towards purchasing a dedicated high-speed camera next year, hopefully sooner rather than later, and we can revisit episodes like this one if anyone is interested. Thanks for your support and listening to my spiel. Here, this is for you. I wish you guys a happy, joyful, and healthy new year. Cheers. See you next year.